Pugh. Pugh, that'll do it! That will do it! Pugh for Bournemouth! The roof of the gold sands is raised! Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football Good evening, Bournemouth fans. AFC Bournemouth are top of the league tonight. Final score at Dean Court was Cherries 1, Wickham 0. And it certainly wasn't the performance that the 2,000 spectators at the Vitality wanted it to be. The chair boys, to their credit, they haven't really been humbled by big margins in the championship so far in this year's campaign. And for that reason, it was never going to be a walkover with Gareth Ainsworth's side it was clear that Bournemouth had too much in the tank throughout the side, but the away side, they were as industrious as they were laborious, really. We were wasteful up front, but thankfully we were clinical when it mattered. Despite a number of wasteful chances in front of the Ted Max stand, Junior Stanislas was in the right place at the right time in front of the North stand. And this was the moment that separated the two sides. Lovely switch. Well, we certainly needed that, didn't we? Junior Stanislas may have had ants in his pants throughout the rest of the game, but he scored when it mattered. If you're outside Dean Core or you've been watching on AFCB TV, there's one thing you need to do, and that's go to afcbpodcast.com forward slash take part. And anyone who does contact us from outside Dean Core, if you get on, I will bring you straight in. But someone who was watching on AFCB TV this morning, this evening, this morning, it's Morgan Scott. Morgan, how are you? Yeah, after what we saw um, at the weekend, it's a lot different this evening. And I'm not, it was superb from 90 minutes from the last game that we saw against um, Huddersfield. Yeah. And um, from what I saw this evening, although it was still, we still got the points and we still yeah. got the win and we're back to the top. It could have been I, that red card was a massive factor in the game. Yeah, and, no, I, um, I mean, I certainly agree on. with that. Morgan, what I'm going to do, what I said is anyone that contacts us and gets in from outside the ground, we're going to bring them in straight away because they obviously wanted to get home and obviously maybe running out of battery. So um, we've got uh, a few guys in here now Andrew, Bo, and Rudy who are, who are here. Hi, Hi guys. How, how are you doing? Are you all right? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I think we're, uh, we're mighty relieved. It was. Uh, bit scrappy as you can probably gather but um yeah a bit of a fight at the end and if you talked about the uh the Stanislas pushing pushing Sam around that we didn't like that very much but um yeah play well final ball was missing at times but um kept going Wickham were a bit uh industrial industrial <laughs> let's say a bit tough but um yeah kept going and uh, found a way to win I mean that's the thing really but didn't play well but um we thought the Cooks Lewis Cook was great Steve Cook, we think Steve yeah. Cook did, was really good, and um, oh, two saves from um, Asmir, unbelievable saves by uh, Asmir to keep us in it. There was, I think, a header from uh, Akin Fenwa, and then there was a shot from outside the box that um, I was going straight in. So, credit to Asmir, he really uh, kept us in the game, but um, yeah, we, we just could, didn't seem to have that um, that final ball, Sam. We couldn't quite thread it through to um, mm. to Dom, but uh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, happy with the points, I'd say. Happy with the points. I mean, we were looking at that uh, performance on Saturday thinking 5-0, we've got the same team you know, tonight, we're going to absolutely smash them. Yeah. But it just yeah. didn't turn out to be the case. But, you know, Wickham didn't provide too much of a threat. We we did yeah. seem, to, seem to make hard work of it at times. Yeah, we did make hard work. I think we started well. We had a couple of chances. There was a really great header from Dom. I mean, great save by Rocky in about seventh or eighth minute. Fantastic save. Thought it was going in. Really good save. 
then I, I don't know, we, we kept plugging away, but um, they, they were dogged. They were dogged. There's nothing really going forward, Wickham. It was a bit sort of League One, to be honest. But um, mm. then we got frustrated. There was there was frustration. Prime was frustrated. They, they were get, the players were getting a bit frustrated. But um, yeah, um, we, we kept going. That could well be Andrew's 3G um, cutting out there or 4G, whatever it is. But um, really appreciate having you on. Uh, thank you so much for that instant reaction. And if you're outside Dean Court, then yeah, do get in touch. Andrew, really appreciate you being on there with Bo and Rudy. So sorry for interrupting you, Morgan. Uh, carry on from where you left off. We we made hard work of it, didn't we? We did. And uh, no way for interrupting me. I'm the chief of doing that. So not a problem at all, Sam. Um, but we did make hard work of it. And... It, I, the minute, was it like 68 minutes? I think there was four mm. minutes between the goal and the red card. And I think that was a massive factor in the game today. And although, you know, it's not the worst game in the world, it was reminded me a bit like how we played at Swansea. Maybe not the pitch, because the pitch at the Liberty were definitely shocking compared to the pitch at Dean Court. But it was a little bit, I'm not sure, like... JT did respond though, he brought Savage on and I thought that was positive because we could have left it a bit too late and got nothing. So I thought that was really good that Sturridge did come on and I think he did make a difference um, what, when he did. What I'm going to do, mate, I, I, I feel weird with you being on that side and us being on, on uh, this side. What we're going to do is just quickly reconnect to Andrew Bow and Rudy who um, who got knocked off there, but um, we'll, we'll come back to them now. We did get disconnected, but we carried yeah. on the conversation, Andrew. Sorry, carry on with yeah, where just... you left off. Just went through the tunnel underneath the uh, the Westway there. So, um, what's that? Yeah, so last, last sort of 10 minutes, uh, their left winger was sort of terrorising Adam Smith a bit, wasn't he? Number 23, Adam Smith got a bit tired, I think, and their left winger was looked quite tasty, putting a couple of balls. They had a header, point blank range that Begovic saved. So, really grateful to Asmi. I thought he was terrific. I mean, probably, he's probably you as me a man of the match, probably. Yeah. Or Lewis or, or Steve Cook. So, um, just relieved. I think that the feeling is... Um, relief funny atmosphere with only sort of 20 percent of the ground full um you know we were cheering a bit but it does go quiet at times it's not the same as having everybody there so um it's our first taste really of uh, the new regime and um yeah lovely to be back of course and uh, I, th I think you're right i think we probably thought it was going to be an easy game but it, it wasn't at all they're quite they're quite dogged yeah uh, quite of course. And, and i'll tell you what the uh, the time wasting by rocky and uh the time the goal kicks and, and the, the, the throw ins to a minute each time and uh, very very frustrating injuries all that slowing the breaking up the play slowing the game down was quite frustrating wasn't it, boys Burnley esque Burnley esque <laughs> yeah Burnley esque well I appreciate you taking the time for um you know to come on the show thank you so much right. Andrew Bo and Rudy and uh, yeah walk back safely etc and um, other cherries other cherries cheers guys appreciate you coming on excellent to have these views from outside Dean Court right. From uh, Bournemouth, we're going to go right across the ocean to Christian Murphy, who's standing by. We've got Pete, uh, Daniel, Rich Neil and Billy Day waiting to come in. But uh, Christian's with us as well. Christian, how are you, buddy? What's up, man? I'm good. How did you enjoy that? 1-0 against the chair, boys. Everyone was thinking 3-4-0, but we we ground it out. It's fair, to, it's fair to say, isn't it? Yeah, well, I will. I will say I, I live. I can see Vitality Stadium from out my window. Actually, I live in Bournemouth. <laughs> but, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm not in America. But uh, yo, I, I was uh, I was very impressed with um, with with the performance. Yo, Asmir Begovic. Do you guys give like an MVP at the end of the season? Because this dude needs to get MVP. He's like, he's like, he's he. Every game, he's like, every there's so much stuff happening, and he's always making clutch plays. And I'm just like, it's not that he's not getting love, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this dude's clutch, dude. Dude's he's, clutch. He's, he's done, he's done so well because he's a player that we didn't think was going to be with us. We thought that Travers was probably going to be favored, and then he came in, and he he's just astounded us, and it's. It is like a new signing, and he he looks incredible, doesn't he, Morgan? He does. Uh, and what's really good about Asmia, I like his attitude. He's obviously come back where it hasn't worked under, for whatever reason, before AFC Bournemouth. He, I, I never thought we would see him in the Bournemouth shirt again. And he's come back, and to credit to him, he's been absolutely sensational. Or I'm going to go, I want to kind of say 
world class, but I'm not quite sure he's quite at that level, but he's not below it. The saves that he's pulling off are phenomenal. Today, again, there were two... I was watching on Sky, so I didn't have the replay. So it was eyes on the screen for 97 minutes. It was hard work. But um, I, I think he made two or three decent saves and they were just key factors in the game because with, um, the commentator on my stream had just before... Um, we scored, he made an outstanding save out for a corner. So it's really, really good. And after Rambo, we weren't sure, as you said, Sam, we were going to see Travis and he yeah. just made our squad so much better. It's like having a new sign in. It's just amazing. Well, what I'm going to do is bring in someone else outside the game, uh, outside the ground. He he got his ticket in the end and that is uh, Steve Hensman, who is here. Steve, how are you? Evening, Sam. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. What was it like to be back there tonight, mate? Oh, mate, I'll tell you what. I had, it was freezing cold. I had a rubbish seat, but I loved every minute of it. It was amazing, <laughs> even though it was not a very good, great game. But, I mean, it was just amazing to be back in the stadium, mate. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, so what oh, stand were you in? Uh, I, was in the, I was in the Mac Shack. You was in the Mac Shack. Sort of bumped into Mr Jordan there. Oh, did you? Yeah, excellent. Yes. It was like a back of the net reunion in different stands. So uh, Keith Brewer <laughs> was uh, sat next to Kurt Tovey and there were all these little things going on. Absolutely loved it. And you know what? I felt that we were wasteful in that first. Well, we got into really good positions, I thought, throughout a lot of the first half, but we just didn't have the clinical edge. I mean, you know, Stanislas has some great opportunities, but just wasn't in the mood to score but in front of the north stand he was by the looks of it um you know well, yeah. how, how do you analyze that game steve it was it, to be honest it was a bit difficult because i was right at ground i was pitch level so I, I couldn't really see what what the formations were i mean i think we started off with a 4-3-3 then we went to a 4-4-2 and then ended up with a 5-3-2 yeah. but i mean that first off dom had that header right at the beginning and i and i thought if that goes in, it could have been a t totally different story because they they were just they were they were just playing for a draw, weren't they? They were just trying to frustrate us as best they could. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I don't think it was the best performances by a lot by a few of them. But you know, we got the job done. They were like uh, the previous caller who was outside said they were dogged. They were dogged team. They really didn't sort of make it hard for us. But um, yeah, just oh, loving loving being back, mate. Loving being back. Yeah, it's um, and it's absolutely superb to see you uh, inside the ground, and you know, hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to get in there again. Morgan, uh, you looks like you want to say something. What did you think of uh, Philip Billum when you got to see him from about fifty yards away tonight, Mister Hempsman? What? Did that... <laughs> he was all right. <laughs> he didn't have his best game, but he um, he he certainly didn't have one of his worst performances. I thought he was all right. He did. A, he did a job. He won a header. Did you see that? Oh, it was sensational. <laughs> but he that's also. Row, I think I've watched. I think I've witnessed him win four. That's four matches on the trot. I've seen him win at least one header. So Craig can eat his words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, we um we need to do already just because it's filling up, and I think it is going to. We're going to swap things around already. Uh, I know you probably appreciate you haven't had much time, Morgan. If you do want to come back, Morgan, uh, a bit later on, I think there'll be less people in at the moment. But um, yeah, people st are struggling to get in, so we're going to rotate up. Steve, thanks. Glad you. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot off, mate. Yeah. Glad you had a good game, mate. Appreciate you coming on after the show and uh, after the game. Not so much a show, was it? It was a yeah, it was a bit tawdry, but we got there in the end. Three points, top of the league. I, I, I didn't care. I didn't care. I was there. I don't. I don't care what the score was. We could have lost five 0 and I wouldn't have cared. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> always <laughs> one. Go away. <laughs> Drive home. <laughs> cheers, Dee. Thanks very much for coming on. And Christian, I appreciate it was very brief, but uh, cheers for your input from uh, right over there across the <laughs> next to the Vitality Stadium. About the way, yeah, yeah. I get, fooled, I, I get fooled very easily by accents. Anyway, Christian, thanks very much for coming on. Take care. Morgan, we'll speak to you a bit later on, hopefully. Right, OK, so what we're going to do is bring in Billy Day here. Hey. And also, we've got Heather with us as well. And also Pete North, who is with us too. Uh, let's oh, bring him again. And where <laughs> is Pete North? There he is. There you go. Oh, hey, there he is. I'm, I'm, I'm Billy's granddad. Oh, yeah. look at this. Hey. Right. You know what? I feel as though we should put you together then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> can you do a virtual hug from up there with the cameras? I don't know. Maybe you can. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, right, yeah, so I'll um I'll come to you first, Billy. Um, one nil over the chair, boys. It wasn't brilliant. We all thought it was going to be a sort of two, three goal difference, but one nil. How are you feeling? Three points, I'm happy with it. And, um, yeah, no, it's a bit of an exciting one. Luton away next. My best mate's a Luton fan. So, it's going to get really tough now. So, I can't wait for that one. Yeah. Um, Pete, what were your thoughts? 1-0. Uh, I think we were trying too hard, if that's even possible. Yeah. I think Stan, in, in, in particular, after his goal on Saturday, I think he was trying to run everything into the back of the net himself. Mm. And uh, was a little bit too selfish. And uh, I think, Pete, yeah, I think overall we were just trying a little bit to... We had some great moves in midfield and uh, we dominated the defence. Our defence was brilliant. But uh, as I say, we're going to get games like this. We get, You know, if we want to be champions, we've got to go and grind results out from games like this. It's not going to be 5-0 every week. Yeah. You know, we're going to have to uh, get through by the skin of our teeth on some days. But uh, overall, it was a good performance. And, uh, you know, and uh, they parked the bus up to a point as well. And, do, you think, uh, do you think, Pete, was, yeah, we sort of overplayed it? Because Stanislas yeah. especially seemed to be getting in, in some incredible sp you know, spots uh, in the first half. And, you know, there was one moment he was set free and. He almost had too many options and then he went for the worst option mm -hmm. of them all by passing into the far corner of the net where it is cleared not not quite off the line but there exactly. were several people wanting the ball so yeah. you know exactly. I think that's, you, you've just illustrated my point there yeah <laughs> well exactly you know and there's him getting shitty with um sam surridge at the end for not swearing it was it, he was doing the same but no it idea. wasn't even it wasn't even if he was going to take a two yard pass for him for a tap in like you know mm. he'd have had to have picked him out and Sam the only thing he could do there was no one really that was around to pass to so he had to have a go at it but why he should react like that that's that's a bit of a worry really yeah it is it's now. Outside Dean Court, we've got Kirk and Owen Tovey. And what we're doing is as soon as people come on on their phones, because they might be running out of battery or they're trying to get home, we bring them on straight away. So okay. we'll give um, Kirk and Owen Tovey. We'll bring them in now. Evening, guys. How you doing, Sam? How you doing, guys? Right. Yeah. Hello, Hello, good. Right. <laughs> One nil over the chair, boys. Not quite the goal fest of Saturday, but, you know, we'll take three points, eh? Hey? Yeah, so I thought we started quite well in the first couple of minutes. I mean, Dom had an early chance. Steve Cook then had an early chance straight afterwards. And then I felt that Wickham came with tactics to frustrate and we nearly got ourselves in a bit of a scrap that was completely unnecessary. Mm. Um, but in the end, they nearly tripped themselves up. But um, I think there was a difference in that game. I thought Begovic did really well at the back. Steve Cook made some good challenges in the first half. But generally, when there is a gulf between the teams in quality, you feel over 90 minutes, nine times out of 10, it will shine through and you'll get the result. So we dug deep um, and we got the result. Yeah, and we did, dig, uh, we did dig deep and they went down to 10 men. I mean, what were your thoughts on that challenge? Uh, was it a clear sending off for you? It was quite difficult to see because it was the other end. But as I said, they were trying to frustrate us and it felt like they were trying to we were getting into a little bit of a scrap and it, and, and it was almost like they were trying to get one of, you know, hopefully trying to get one of our players sent off. And in the end, they got their, themselves sent off. And, you know, we have more quality than them anyway. And, and it just helped the situation. But, I mean, um, Owen alluded to it as well, you know, that Sam Surridge, for me, changed the game. He just gives you that different dimension. Um, and he just played on the uh, shoulder of the centre-backs. And um, it just helped free up those other special players that could play around him to just get that goal that we needed. Yeah. Um, it was your man of the match, Owen, because it's, um, I'm sort of not really sure who I would, who I would be giving it to at this stage. Yeah. I've got to say neither of I could have, could have, could have given it to a few other players, David Brooks, Don Solanke, Junior Sanchez with the goal, Sam Surridge, even just the way he played after he came on, it just changed the game for us. Yeah. Agree. I mean, you for me, Kirk, like Wickham posed about as much threat as Huddersfield did on Saturday. I mean, they had isolated chances, yet we just seemed to make a meal out of it tonight. 
whereas we didn't uh, versus Huddersfield. What, it, it, what the it, hell was the difference? Yeah, it just felt like we were overdoing it quite a lot in the first half. There was two touches being taken by, you know, Stanislas, uh, Brooks. Um, although I did say in my half-time sort of analysis that I thought Brooks would play a part in us breaking the deadlock at some point. But we were just overdoing it. We were taking too many touches. When we were crossing the ball, it was almost like we were hoping something was going to happen instead of like what we did Saturday, we created stuff to happen. And, and it just felt like we were just putting in aimless balls hoping it was just going to come off a defender and go in their own net or something. It, we we had no plan behind the crosses. It was just, we were just hopelessly throwing them in, I felt, from, from inside the stadium. Yeah. Um, what would you be switching up at the weekend? Uh, I mean, it look, surely we'll be making changes. We won't be going with that same team again against Luton. Will we, Owen? Or do you think, I mean, what do you think? We've we've got to make a few changes. Maybe give Josh King another run out. Maybe take a new Stanislas. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And um, Kirk, are you in agreement with that? I mean, I'm not sure about Josh King, and um, and I, 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 I again, I go with Sam Surridge. I think we done well against Huddersfield Saturday, but I, I still go back to the point that Dom's a great player and a great asset for us, but it's not natural for him. Everything that Sam does, it gives us just a different dimension. It's not natural to Dom. It's almost like he has to. Uh, he has to work even harder to do those types of jobs that Sam Surridge does when he chases down lost causes and he aims for that box first thing. Um, but I mean, I will say as well, Sam, you know, it was disappointing by junior Stanislas at the end. Um, that was actually down our end. And, and I'm really disappointed with junior there. You know, Sam Surridge changed the game and, and almost gave us an, an element that we did. Oh. Oh. I think he may have just got a call come through. So what we'll do is just remove him whilst he's uh, sorting out. Oh, no, there he is. You're so popular. You're getting phone calls or texts coming through, are you? Yeah, I think the wife wants me home to unpack some boxes. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, hold of um, so yeah, no, my final thing is I'm, I'm a bit disappointed with Junior. You know, the way he, you know, he had a go at Sam Surridge today. You know, he, he's come on that pitch. He's changed the game for us. He's tried to get himself a goal and... You know, that was totally unacceptable from Junior. He's he's a he's a player that's been in the game a long time. Sam Surridge is learning the game. And, and it could have been a simple, you know, I was there, I was open. But it didn't need to go to the extreme that I felt it went to in front of my eyes. Brilliant. Uh, nice to have you on, Kirk and Owen. Really yeah. appreciate it. Um, how, are you, how are you driving? Are you driving at the moment? Or, or have you got a driver now? You're so popular as a pundit. Or like, <laughs> is it just the background that's moving? I, I can't really tell. I can't work it out. No, we're, we're standing still in the car, ready to put the heaters on. Um, as, as, as you probably know, we leave house today, so I don't know yeah. where I'm sleeping tonight. Um, yeah. But I've got a 10, 15 minute drive home and I'm looking forward to going to bed. All right, mate. I thought you were in Herbie for a minute. I, I, like, I just wasn't <laughs> sure. But anyway, Kirk and Owen, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Cheers, guys. See you later. Cheers. Cheers. Um, so, Pete, you know, did any thoughts of what Kirk said resonate yeah. with you there? What what I find, I find uh, Sam is an out-and-out -out striker. He is a old-fashioned number nine. And uh, good though uh, Dom, Dom's been lately, I still think of him as a number 10 that will hold up play and give, give the ball across to the main striker. But he's been forced into that role, if you like. I think at the weekend... I think uh, JT's either got to play Sam, Sam with either Josh King or Dom, one of the two, because they'll be the ideal strike partnership mm. of the two. Well, I've always thought of, uh, because of the, his hold-up player, I've always thought of Dom as a number 10 rather than an out-and-out -out striker. He just seems to have been playing that role really well lately. Yeah, very much agree. Very much agree. Pete, what we're going to do, we're going to keep swapping it around so some people still wait to come in. So okay. thank you so much. And glad we're giving you guys a family reunion up the top there. So yeah, <laughs> really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, take care. Thanks for coming on, mate. Okay, no problems. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Thank you very Good much. Up. And uh, Billy, I'm going to bring in uh, Paul Kenwood now. I'm going to come to you next and I'm going to come to Heather. But how did Billing get booked? during that because i can't work out why he got booked i mean it was um was it lewis cook who made the challenge 
I think yeah. it was. And yeah, then yeah. Philip Billing ended up getting booked. It must have been something he said to the ref. There's just been a few uh, you know, comments here in chat. And to me, that was one of the points where I just looked back. I got a big question mark next to that minute thinking... He didn't that definitely happen? touch them anyway. He didn't touch any of the players. Yeah, I think it may have been, I feel like it may have been a verbal thing that I didn't personally hear, but I have no idea why Billing got a yellow card there. No, but, absolutely. Um, final thought, I'm going to say... I'm my ratings out of 10 as always. I'm going to give that an 8 out of 10. I thought we, we got the three points in the end. We got over the line. But um, yes, that's we have to, uh, JT would definitely have to give a word to uh, Stanislas over what he said to Sam there because you got just give a little I was there. It's fair, but you don't need to, that's a bit over the top, in my opinion. Uh, it's not necessary. And uh, my man of the match, I'm going to give it to Begovic because four clean sheets in a row, he's been outstanding. And I'm so glad to have him back at the club. Brilliant. That's Billy Day. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. See ya. Cheers. Thank you very much. Um, Heather, what did you make of that Stanislas stuff? Because he, he had a go at Lloyd Kelly in the first half. I think it was because like Lloyd Kelly almost gave up the overlapping run. And then towards the end, yeah, having like, verbals with Sam Surridge. I think it's one of these things that he needs to just maybe come out and just have an interview straight away to nip it in the bud and say, look, I was frustrated because yeah. we're all talking about it now. And it almost takes the shine off what was a very industrious win, doesn't it? It does. And John and I were talking about it and basically said that um, perhaps because he's been doing so well and he's been playing without any injuries, touch wood, um, yeah. that it's all sort of gone to his head and he thinks that he should be getting the goals and he's just become a bit of a selfish player. Well, you never know. Paul, what's your thought on that? It was very strange to watch live, I must admit. It was <clears throat> very odd. Um, I don't quite know what Junior was doing. I think it's maybe the passion got the better of him. But as you can tell, my throat's going, <laughs> my voice is going, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was doing more shouting than Junior was, but uh, it but was... It was a bit strange for a senior player to to take that stance with a yeah. with two junior players too. I think he's yeah. just got out of bed the wrong side because even when he went off at half time, he had a really moody look on his face. Mm. Mm. Yeah, passion I don't mind, but I think grabbing hold of shirts is is going too far. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Now, Daniel's with us too. Rich Neil, you're coming in next, as is Filippo. Craig's joined us. Uh, Daniel, we're going to bring in shortly too. Uh, but yeah, so. How did this compare, Paul, with uh, Saturday night? Obviously, it's a game under the lights. There was an extra, what, 800 people in there tonight. What was the atmosphere like inside Dean Court? The atmosphere was... Uh, it, it was interesting because there was a mix of people who'd been there on Saturday and there was a mix of people who hadn't been there yet. And so there was still that positivity that we had on Saturday, but I think there was actually a lot more frustration at the fact that we know we're better than what we saw on the pitch. There was a lot of slow play. There was a lot of holding yeah. up of the ball. Um, Lloyd Kelly, you know, was trying to find a pass forward and kept having to go backwards because there wasn't any, any forward pass. So mm. it was, it was really hard to watch at times in, in, you know, we knew that we were better than that. We saw that on Saturday, we were much more attacking, but you know, we're not playing against Huddersfield every week, unfortunately, or every game. Um, so um, I think Wickham came out with a game plan and that was to park Gak in Fenwa, which they did quite well. Um, they parked him right in the way of our defence and, uh, you know, he, he caused us problems. We couldn't get the ball out because <laughs> they just kept playing it long to him. I mean, you could say to some extent that Wickham's game plan worked, but they left so much space at the back. You know, like on, on you know, perhaps on another day, that could have been like 3 or 4 nil. Were we just not clinical? I mean, what's, you know, why wasn't that more convincing than what it should have been? Yeah, I'd say we weren't clinical. We weren't the, the forward pass to the strikers just wasn't there. There was no the creative part was missing, and that's kind of junior's bread and butter normally. Um, yeah. But that today he was having an off game, I think. So um, yeah, I think I think that was you know even Brooks didn't really get many chances to to shine. I mean, I don't know whether they were favouring getting the ball over the left hand side over the right hand side, but you know they seem to forget about Brooks a lot of the time. We were calling for them to switch the ball a lot of the time away from the left to the right, where uh, Brooks was sat mm. waiting and he was getting quite frustrated on the side as well. Mm. Paul, appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. Appreciate no problem. It. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. And um, Heather, before we let you go, uh, you know, give us a man of the match and you'll score out of 10 for that performance because it probably won't be as high as the Huddersfield performance, I'm guessing, but uh, yeah. yeah, give us a man of the match. 
Well, my personal man of the match is going to be Philip Bidding. Mm. I thought he did really good today. Um, he seems to be having more of a, a go at like actually trying to score goals and you know just he's everywhere he's yeah um and for the score i'd say seven out of ten seven out of ten heather thanks very much for coming on thank you <laughs> cheers thank you people have been calling for filippo and he's standing by but rich neil is going to be coming in next rich will say hello to you very shortly uh and also filippo but before we say hello there's plenty of people watching so shall we show you the moment once again that separated the two teams i think we should lovely switch <laughs> Beautiful. That is fan footage, by the way, not official footage. Um, Daniel, over in there in Florida, how are you? Good. How are all of you guys? Very good. Very good. Yeah, good. Thoughts on that performance? Um, not the best performance, but maybe um, at least we scored the goal because no one wants a zero zero. Like mm. because fans are back, no one wants a zero zero. I remember when I was over there, zero zeros were the awfulest thing. So at least we um, scored one. Um, my opinion, I don't know, but half of the game, their defense were not the baddest. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, um, I think it's a it's a hard game to sort of work out, and I I think I sort of need to kind of watch it again. But you know, Wickham didn't provide that many threats; they were isolated chances. But we seemed to just make a meal out of it when we were in their attacking third. Junior Stanislas consistently seemed to make the wrong choice, and we almost seemed to overplay it. At times, it almost felt like we were the Man City of the Championship, and they were the Bournemouth of the Premier League at times. But you know, we just couldn't break through. You know, thankfully we did. And uh, it, I mean, the sending out probably helped though, Daniel, didn't it? Wait, can you say it again? Actually, it was like not paying attention on an accident. Very sorry. <laughs> no. but, to be honest, lots of people switch off when I speak to them. I don't know. Um, you know, they're sending off. It certainly helped us to get the result, didn't it? What was your view on that? Um, it's, um, I'll say it was a key part because, um, because, it's a key part because, like, I guess it gave um, cause it gave us more, like I want to say, it gave us more confidence in a way, because mm. like when one player went off, didn't we score? Mm. So, I think it's because like one player left, they felt more powerful because like there's more people on our team than their team, so I thought they felt more powerful and then scored. Yeah, very good point. Very good point. We're going to keep switching up because uh, there's plenty of people on. Daniel, I know it's very brief, but thank you so much for your views today. Look forward to speaking to you after the looting game, hopefully. Fingers crossed another win. Thanks very much. Filippo. Ciao. Hi, Sam. Hi, everybody. Uh, Hope you can hear me because uh, uh, we are a lot today, tonight. Sorry. Who yeah, to, I can hear want you. to join. Can... Yeah. You're all good here and also in the background. I'm going to bring in Vin as well. And as it's relatively late, I will speak to Vin first. Rich, you're coming up. I know you've been patiently waiting. I will come to you. Good things, right? Um, Vin, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. Analyse that for me, mate. Uh, not the greatest of wins, uh, I can say. Definitely not the, our best performance in the championship so far. But we got it over the line and I think... I think that red card definitely gave us a bit of more confidence in a way because we were not doing anything up to that red up to that red card. Sorry, because we were not creating any chances. Our balls were not like sluggish in a way. We were not doing anything. However, when that when that man got sent off and that allowed us to really galvanise us and bring us back to the the 
get us the win, it I think it really helps, and I think this could be a big win, you know, heading into Christmas, which has got a lot of games in it, especially in the championship. Yeah, I I do agree with what you're saying. Um, what do you think of Wickham today? Did they impress you at all? Yeah, I think they made it tough for us in most. Like they were winning most of the aerial battles, in my opinion, and I think they were winning most of the. Like the, like the tough the tough tackles they were winning we weren't winning any of those and I think that's the p- problem with us at, like us, us at Bournemouth people all kind of say we're like a like a light team like a, like a small team like not a very like aggressive team and I think we need to change that stereotype of being like Bournemouth and being like very like oh we've been tackled we sit there for five minutes and complain and we need to get up and real we need to get stuck in more because we are. Some might say, like, not the laughing stock in a way, but, like, we've always been told that we're, like, the team who, like, don't have the very tough players and always get, like, barged around everywhere. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, Rich, how are you, sir? I've been waiting here all this time, and now my sound is going mad. I can't hear anything, but um, hopefully it's all right now. It seems to have quieted down. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, firstly, I just want to say um, we managed to get Steve back to a happy Steve. Managed to get him a ticket today and alert yeah. him to the fact he could get one. So thank goodness for that because I couldn't cope with another evening like that. <laughs> um, but just a, I got a couple of points. I've just, you know, through the game. I mean, no one's mentioned Simpson tonight. I mean, he, he was, you know, he was quite solid, especially at 10 minutes, that header that nearly... Um, or a defensive header that nearly sort of took him out or whatever mm-hmm. happened, but he seemed to cope with that. Um, Lewis Cook was doing some good defensive blocks and uh, he was class again, obviously. Um, Billing, I thought, was more hungry, um, winning some nice headers, getting some good blocks in. Um, that save, 60 minutes, Asmir, lovely save. Brilliant. I think he's my man of the match. Um, and then 63 minutes, obviously changed the game with the red card on Patterson. Stan Brooks link up for the goal, and then we got there 1 0. But and then 93rd minute, Stanislas chucked his toys out of the pram for the second time. So, quite, quite noise on tonight, but um, at least we got the win. So, happy cherry in the end. I, to be fair, just one more point I did think that it was going to be a more difficult game today. I didn't think it was going to be another 5 0 by any means. I thought we'd have to grind it out and that's exactly what we sort of had to do. And luckily we got the uh, right end of it in the end. I'm looking forward to Dan Juma coming back as well to inject a bit more. Yeah. Uh, he'll, but... he'll certainly give us another option, won't he? And by the way, uh, we've, uh, Steve Hansman is actually watching you and he's, he sent you a really lovely message, which I've put on screen there for you to read. So there you go. That's Steve Hansman's <laughs> message to Rich who, uh, Obviously, he said it ironically, but he's love um, is in the air. <laughs> yeah, love, love is in yeah, the air. It's oh. always in the air with me and Steve. You know, he loves me really. Just uh, you know, love it. Brilliant, but, Rich. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, sorry yeah, that I had to I'm, meet you. I'm old. struggling to hear anyone else apart from myself, unfortunately. So sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. Anyway, oh, take care now. Bloody great. Yeah. All right, cheers. <laughs> take care. Cheers. Thanks very much, uh, Rich Neil. Really appreciate it. Um, Vin, before you go, um, what should we do to mix it up against Luton? I think we play more aggressive. Play, I think I don't think we start a new formation. I think we keep the same lineup, but play a more bit more football and play it yeah. on the floor a little bit more. We seem to be like hoofing the ball up, which think was which wasn't working. And see, you could see when we played ticky stack of football, we got the goal. So I think we play football on the grass properly and we'll go score and I think we can definitely go beat Luton 100% Top man Vin cheers for coming on appreciate it mate yeah. cool thank you so uh, we've got uh, waiting um, Andrew's going to be back um, in about five minutes or so Craig will be here too but uh, we're going to go uh, fully international now with the introduction of the Philly chairs and also Jeremy who I'm going to speak to very shortly hi guys hope you're doing alright Filippo you. then Thoughts on that? 1-0 against a team that's in 23rd position in the league. You, you sort of look at it and think, <laughs> you know, you're thinking, we could score a few goals here tonight, but it didn't It didn't happen that way. Yeah, it was tough, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. It was really, it, this game was blocked uh, until uh, until maybe they record, but um, it, 
it didn't change uh, uh, quite at all because uh, we come at the the chances. I I think that uh, the chances the chance uh, with the Akinfawa uh, spider, uh, mm. and that was uh, yeah we we had some risks, but uh, uh, then also we started playing better and uh, we've got the goal mm. with the. Yeah, and uh, last time on Saturday I had some doubt uh, on that, but now I am sure that David Brooks should pl must play in attack because uh, just just look at that uh, uh, series of passings between him and uh, and Julian Stanislas. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah it, it could be our <laughs> our new signing for the. <laughs> For the attack, <laughs> but we had uh, already in uh, in the team. So, um, Philippe, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, agree. For, I mean uh, speaking of David Brooks, does it worry you? David Brooks has obviously got the Player of the Month with the EFL. Um, also, his form in December is still pretty damn good. Scored that goal at the weekend. Did well tonight. Transfer window opens in January. Is it going to be a worry? Transfer window is coming, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm a bit worried uh, about him because uh, because some Premier League teams, of course, they they are gonna they are gonna search for uh, for him. And uh, also, I think uh, I don't know if also Joshua King uh, finally <laughs> uh, we we will find out uh, his team, but. Uh, Honestly, I I don't want him to leave because I mean he, it's one of the players that made up this team. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that you're looking sharp tonight and uh, you're looking good, and it looks like you're in an old style phone box as well. You can probably see these comments. <laughs> yeah, coming it's on actually the it's here. actually my den. I'm in that. the corner. See, so you just kind of look around. Yeah. Uh, Beautiful. But anyway, um, what was your take on tonight? I beg your pardon? What was that? What was your take on tonight's game? Uh, it was uh, – actually, I, I kind of expected it. Um, it. We always seem to kind of have a, a, a banger of a game where we just, you know, 4 nothing, 5 nothing, and then we we fall flat, right? And, and, but that's all right. You, you play to – we – unfortunately, we play to the competition. Um, that happens with the team. We are the best team in the league, in my opinion, and we are going to take everyone's best shot every single match. And so if we're not up for that game, we're going to see this. But it, it is what it is. I think Neil Dawson said something on Twitter. He mentioned with our formation, we had Billing and Lerma out wide, and those guys are not equipped to deliver the ball into the box consistently. And so I think that was where we struggled leading up to the 10 man uh, or the red card, which resulted in 10 men for, and I think it's funny. You guys say Wickham. It's spelled Wycombe. I, I, that's another one I don't get, but Hey, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I thought, I thought we did. Okay. Here's something that, that no one has talked about, at least not that I've heard. I thought Josh King looked pretty good tonight. Where, where has this guy been the last 12 months? He was mm. active. He played hard. Um, there was a point where we got a break. Um, I don't remember if it was Lewis Cook or Stanislaus that was coming down the middle of the field. And, boy, King darted down the left side. And, uh, unfortunately, we went to the right. And if if they would have just looked to the left, he was wide open. And he was running full steam. So, um, And, by the way, I'm, I'm looking sharp. I, I You know, you got to remember here in the States it's 530. So I, I just got home from work. So ah, okay. some of us have to keep this world economy going, guys. <laughs> yeah, of course. And you know what? It's, a, it's an interesting uh, thing about Josh King because, you know, we're all concerned that he's going to do a Ryan Fraser. And, you know, we want to we don't want him to leave like that because he's a he's a player that's provided us with a lot of joy, a lot of goals. And he's a good player. And we don't want to think of him as a player that's downing tools. And the fact that he is, uh, hasn't got another excuse this week. I mean, there are probably a raft of, of excuses that he can use left, but he hasn't got many more. And he, he turned up tonight and he only played a short period of time, but he did well. And he's, he's a good option to start maybe against Luton if we want to rotate it. Cause players like Dom Solanke have been, have been, you know, they've played a lot of minutes Great. and, 
whilst Sam Surridge is um is a you know a great option to start, maybe maybe it could be him and King up front if we're playing two. I don't know. Um, the Philly Chairs is here. Aiden, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good. One nil against uh, Wycombe. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Perhaps, perhaps it should be that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what were your thoughts after that, mate? Um, overall, I thought it was one of our worst, or not not worst performance. Uh, it was a lesser performance this week. I didn't get the chance to watch over the weekend, but I thought we were a little bit slow. Some of the passes just didn't seem like they were there. We made some of the hard passes look easy, and the easy passes look hard, especially the first half. But um, I thought Stannis last overall. I know he scored the goal, but I didn't think he played too well. Just sometimes his, his passages weren't there, and he didn't make the right decisions, I thought. But no, um, overall, I'm just glad we got the, the three points. If you, I said, I think earlier, if you uh, play bad and still win, then you did something right, which they did do today. Uh, grinding out the win, I did think that Sam Surge was kind of the difference with that. Yeah, agree. Yeah. No, I mean, what would you be changing ahead of the Luton match uh, on Saturday, Aiden? Um, I, I'd probably take Midam and Stanislas out, give them both a break because Stanislas has been had his injury worries previously on, and he's been playing a lot recently. But then Jim out, so maybe put King out onto the left or some other formation with uh, two up top with King and Sam, and Brooks just right in behind. But I do like. As we said, Brooks out wide more and in attack because it seems like he gets combinations better while being out there sometimes and in the middle. But no, I think that's last and Dom probably deserve a break. And maybe after King did have a good run, I thought, as Jeremy said, he was really running well when he came on. I thought maybe he deserves a, a chance, but maybe not too dead set on that. Brilliant. Aiden, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate yeah. it. We, uh, we're we're going to mix it up and do one of our final changes of the night. Nice so talk, thank yeah. you so much. Thank yeah, you. really appreciate it, mate. Um, also, Jeremy, um, I appreciate it was a, a short chance tonight, but there's hey, been certain people wanting to Sam, come on. Th thanks again for, for the opportunity. And I will say, I don't view how Stanislas, Slas, whatever you call him, yeah. uh, what, how he responded today is necessarily a negative thing. He, you can tell True. he wants it. He's competitive, especially when he got on Kelly. Kelly should have been gotten on when he didn't run for that ball. Not a yeah. bad, not a great pass, but you've got to give it. You got to go, and he didn't. Yeah. And so I, I don't blame him for that. So anyway, y'all have a good yeah. one, guys. Be safe out there. Will do. Thank you very much. And Filippo, we cannot let you go before you give <laughs> the public the catchphrase. Come on. <laughs> yes, up the cherries. <laughs> Uh, At the Sam, uh, yeah, Sam, uh, one, one last thing. Uh, I hope that you will come back to, to Dean Court for the reactions uh, outside of Dean Court. I, I think that yeah. uh, Mirwall, Mirwall at home uh, on Boxing Day would be a good game, a pretty good game for you to, to come back. It all depends about the ticketing situation. You know what? I, I would love to. I mean, I you know, to be fair, mate, I could have gone today with maximum points, but... I didn't plan my evening to have a, a huge chunk of space free in the evening because at the end of the day, like if you go into a match that you've got to get two hours before, you've got to drive over there in rush hour traffic. You've got to have your yeah. dinner before. I mean, I might as well start preparing at breakfast for match day. So I didn't plan my time yeah, it's, around it. Yeah, it's for me, when uh, I, I have to go to the Roma matches at the Stadio Olimpico, I have to plan my dinner. All the, yeah. uh, I don't know when... Uh, when the bus uh, passes, so uh, uh, it's it's always difficult. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I think you know, for me, like, um, I don't have a burning desire to get back. I mean, I've I've enjoyed lo uh, watching a lot of sort of non-league football, but for me, uh, you know, this is just my personal opinion. It do it doesn't represent a match day experience. I know for some, like any football is you know, good football to watch you know for me I, i'm a i'm sort of a, a bit all or nothing um but, but as i say that's just my um own opinion and i i don't want to buy a ticket half-heartedly if there's someone that is desperate to be going that can't get it because i've got it so um <laughs> i and you know it's one of those things like i would have to be planning my time for something that yeah. may not happen because it was released today that max points holders could go um i don't want to be sort of yeah read on, you know, on the website, next on week the club website yeah, exactly. So, you know, I could leave lots of time free for something that may not happen, and then I'll be twiddling my thumbs thinking, now what do I do? But anyway, um, mm. Filippo, thanks for coming on, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. See you on Saturday. Cheers. Cheers. Someone who was at the uh, stadium was uh, Tom, who we're going to bring shortly, but Dom is here first, uh, audio only by the looks of it. Dom, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. 
Yes, I can. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, loud and clear, mate. That audio is amazing. That's quite crisp. Like a DJ or something. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, not too bad. What were your thoughts on that today? It was a good performance from the team, to be honest. Um, I think the Bournemouth mentality is, has always been sort of, you score goals, we'll go and score two more than you have. That's sort of always been our mentality with Eddie Howe. But I think what Tyndall's done is come in and he said, we're not going to let those goals go in. We're going to just go out there, batter the team, and then not park the bus, but keep it, play it safe, which was a bit weird today against Wickham. We've gone out there and this team, obviously, they're not doing particularly well this season. Uh, sitting about 23rd, but obviously this is a championship, anything can happen. So I think we really let Wickham come into the game, but until that red card, I don't know whether we would have been able to win it. You know, I think it could have just stayed as a nil-nil draw, but I think Brooks has been amazing this season, top player for us. Uh, I think Solanke, if he really gets into his form, he could be, he could definitely get a high number of goals this season. And Stanislas, I I mean, he's performing well at the moment. Not sure went on with Surridge earlier, like later in the game. Um, But I just like the rotation of the squad at the moment. I think we're just, we've connected now. What we didn't have in the Prem was a team we wanted to work and this team wants to get back up to the top, which is what we like to see. Dom, succinct, but I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for coming on because we're going to be wrapping up the show soon. We really appreciate right. it. And if you want to come on again, more than welcome because your views much appreciated. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. Cheers, Dom. Appreciate it. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, finish it well. Firstly, before we come to Craig, Morgan and Tom to finish the show, uh, Morgan had some brief screen time earlier, but um, it was one of these things where we were rushing to get people who were in, inside Dean Court on screen. One thing we did was put out a tweet to ask for your five word match report. So what I'm going to do before we bring on uh, the crew is go through some of them now. So hopefully uh, you can see my screen. Chris Hubble, great game for the cherries. Tim, Junior Stanislas is our marmite. Um, we're nearly watching, we were nearly watching boxing, said Richard Neal. Um, four clean sheets for Begovic, said James. Yep, good point. Sam Surridge loves Junior Stanislas, says Alan. Alan, mate, hope you're good. Um, Abby, why was Stanislas so angry? And also, we could have some more five word match reports coming in. We might ask the guys in chat next for their five word view. So, coming in is Craig, like AFCB Jay Carragher on Twitter, Morgan Scott, Tom Jordan, who I'm going to come to first. Tom, you went to the game in yeah, the 10 Mac, 1 0. How are you? Oh, I feel stressed, mate. I feel stressed. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I've lost my voice a little bit shouting at that ref. But, um, yeah, it was just felt, I don't know, it was just a weird one, wasn't it? I think, um, I think looking back on it, I'm just so relieved that we got over the line, you know. Um, it was a, a really weird game. And even at the end, obviously, with, with what happened with, with Stan and Surridge as well, it was a bit of a weird one, red card in there. But I think we got to look at it. I saw that the Watford were ahead tonight and Brentford were down to 10 men straight into the second half and they only drew the game. And sometimes you just got to find a way to win, especially in this division. You're not going to be able to just roll over teams all the time. And Tell you what, Wickham will get some points playing like that because they're, they're nasty. They're hard to play against and uh, they've got some some aerial presences in there as well and they'll nick some goals and they worked hard. But we we got over the line and I think we've always spoke about how we could be a bit weak defensively and I think we need to also give give praise when it goes the other way. And uh, that's our fourth clean sheet in a row. Begovic, just magnificent again. And obviously, Steve Cook, we know what he can do. But big up Jack Simpson, who I thought was brilliant again tonight, um, who's come in for Meps and done really well. So... Look at the positives, but it was yeah, it was, it was a tough one to to watch, and I just really didn't think it was going to come. So I'm just glad it did. You texted me at eight thirty six saying these lot will waste, uh, yeah, these lot will time waste their way to a point if we're not careful. <laughs> and then you went on to say they're awful and horrible to watch. We needed one of them early ones to go in. I'd get Surridge on ASAP, and it was almost like you had some kind of. You I know, text JT. Uh, yeah, you have some kind of connection with JT because it happened. And then once again, he you know he ran his socks off. What does Sam Surridge need to do to get a start? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because, I mean, he hasn't started since he got man in the match. Um, I, I appreciate that some games are different, but, but tonight I really felt he might um, because I felt they're similar to Barnsley in the sense they were, you know what I mean, with their line and they're obviously, they're going to make it difficult. They'll rip your hand off for a point. And I just kind of felt, even though he wasn't directly, you know, part of the goal, as soon as he come on, suddenly they had another player that occupied him. Dom looked so isolated. 
And we just needed to get another body up there. And, and Sam done that again and worked his socks off. The amount of times we had it at the back and we were just playing that ball in the channel. And you're thinking, well, that's where Surridge would be, running them channels. So, um, he's once again, he's come on the pitch and made a difference. And, you know, we won the game when he come on. So, he's knocking on that door. So, um, I, I won't be surprised if he if he gets to start soon. But, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. And it's... It's. I think the hard thing is, it's easy to say Surridge should start, but then you're probably going to have to drop Bill in, and you could probably argue that he's deserved to start as well. So it's a difficult one, but that was the sub I would have made, and I was glad JT did. And uh, at the end of the day, we it got the job done. So um, it was a hard watch at times, but we got it done. Uh, whilst I'm speaking to you, Paul Bellamy said, Sam, ask someone who was at the game about the red card. Were the players late to react? Because it was... It was almost like, yeah, Lewis Cook went for that ball just on the sort of apex of the penalty area. And then it seemed to be a challenge where both feet were off the floor. But then there was a almost a pause. And then the players thought, actually, if we get angry now, like the referee may bring out a red. And it was almost like they kind of thought, oh, yeah, let's react. Was yeah. that the case? I mean, it was a definite, whether it, I haven't looked at it again, um, I was, uh, had a decent view on it and straight away I thought that could be a red, you know, that was nasty. And um, I, I, from my point of view, it looked like Begovic went straight over. He ran, I've never seen Begovic like that before. Um, and he seemed to kind of uh, start a domino effect when he went over and started, then everyone kept going. I don't know if it's whether uh, initially it looked like Lewis might be hurt and obviously with his injury problems, I wonder if the players looked at that. But what I thought was that for a ref that I thought had a shocking game, um, to be fair to him, he didn't just come out and he went over and had a word with the linesman, who obviously had his say as well, and seemed to take his time to make the decision. And then, in my opinion, I haven't seen it back, but I thought it was a red card on first view, and it looked nasty to me. Um, but yeah, I was glad the ref done that because he was letting him get away with a lot throughout the game. So yeah, I, was I, um, I noticed Tom, you met Steve Hensman tonight in the TED match. How how much did you have to crane your neck to look at him? Because when I met him the other week, it was just like, oh my god. He's tall as well. I mean, Morgan's tall, but Steve Hensman's Yeah, Morgan's a tall one as well, yeah. Yeah, no, he's, he's a bit of a unit, yeah. So, um, I mean, to be fair, when you're watching the game and you see the units like Akin Fenwa and then the one they bought on for him, <laughs> and they're, they're beasts, aren't they? <coughs> oh. I tell you what, if they, if they play like that, though, they can, if they just dig in, like, I think the problem Wickham are going to have is that when they're at home, I wonder if they're almost expected to try and play and try and attack teams and they ain't going to be good enough. No. I think they should almost set up like that because they could obviously defend all right, and then they still get the odd half chance. I thought uh, McCleary on one side was pretty handy. And they've got two big players and they should just use that, I think, and just try and almost shit house their way to a few points. But um, <laughs> nasty side. And I'm, I'm glad we just got out there with the 1-0, mate. Well, Craig's here as well. Craig, Craig, to be honest, mate, I'm I'm surprised you've got time to talk to us. Going through your little black book of A.D. Williams, Dylan Kerr and uh, Bill Turnbull <laughs> and all these celebs you're somehow <laughs> queuing up. You know, little old back of the net in the corner of your phone book, like you might, and you may have someone else planned for the next preview. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So for our L Luton preview, I won't say who it is, okay. um, but let's just say mm. England international that's won a very very big competition on three separate occasions. Oh, like interesting. It. All right, we'll 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 do a bit of googling. Oh, but... of that. I mean, you know, Bill. Tur you know, if I'm going by your Twitter followers, when Bill Turnbull's got a hundred thousand, are we talking lower or higher? I know this is a bit of a price is right here, but lower or higher? I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the millions. Bloody hell! Anyway, it Beasley does it. it just Beasley's <laughs> mate, isn't he? I'm not sure. I haven't checked, but a big, big, big name. You know, uh, you know. It's really Kurt Tovey, isn't it? It's Kurt Tovey. He's a secret Luton fan, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> anyway, back on back on topic. Craig, one nil. Um, we were industrious. We were laborious, but we got it done. Yeah, so I think Wickham defended very, very well. They were very dogged. Um, they got stuck in all the times that we attacked. They had tons of men behind the ball. They, you know, I mentioned it to Bill um, on our opposition preview and how I've seen them play before. And they all play for each other. I think they will get points. I think they'll probably stay up. If they play like that week in, week out. Um, 
But our quality shone through, thank God. Um, it was a tough watch. Um, I think Akin Fenwa, for them um, in particular, as much as a great bloke he is and he is a unit, he causes teams some problems. I just don't think he's mobile enough for this division. Um, and I, you know, I think it was a very, very good three points in the end um, against a very tough team. Just very quickly, I, I know you've mentioned a couple of things that I wanted to bring up. Um, Junius, Junius Ballislav, um the first incident, so he had a spat with Kelly. I think he had he was well within his right to do that because Kelly didn't play to the whistle. Um, there was people lining up in the box. Um, that annoyed me a little bit because Kelly looked like he would be onside. But even if the, even if the linesman play a flag for offside, you play to the whistle, you get that cross in, and if somebody gets on the end of it, then it goes off for offside. Then you know, so be it. The second one with Sam Surridge. I think was completely out of order, completely out of order, because Sam Surridge went for the goal. Um, it was a good attempt, and he can't be doing that. And I'm hoping Jason's having some real stern words with him tonight about that. Well, apparently they've all kind of um, brushed it off and said it's a uh, you know it's all been forgotten now. And I think mm -hmm. the, the way that Sam Surridge created that chance, he was all on his own when he picked up the ball. So I think he was almost within his right. He's a striker for goodness sake. He needs goals yeah. and cut into his left in it. And it wasn't like he fluffed his lines and didn't hit the target. The keeper was forced into a good save. And yeah, yeah fair enough. Um, Stanislas might have been in a better position, although uh, you know I couldn't see him on camera at that. If I, you, I, if you I wonder, that Sam, just. Quickly, I wonder if, because I agree with you there, because I, I think once he was in that position, he should shoot. I, I have, have a feeling that Stanislas was more annoyed that he didn't run it into the corner. Do you know what I mean? Because cause I looked at it and I thought, well, he's a striker. He's going to have a shot there, like you say. But I wonder if it was maybe when he first got the ball, he should have just gone for the corner, potentially. I don't know. That was just a, a thought that I had. But um, go on, Morgan. You want to speak, mate? Go on. Can I just say that, um, yeah, to be fair to him, um, I don't think he um, Junior had a right. Uh, he overstepped the mark completely because yeah. Junior got his goal. Oh, so it's not like he hadn't scored the team then. And you know, football is a team goal, and I think that's really disrespectful for a senior player like Junior Stanislas to go over to a youngster. I think Sam Savage is what, like twenty one, twenty two. He, mm -hmm. he he's just starting out in his career. He's done really, really well. He's got four, five goals this season so far, and he's excellent. And he should be starting games. And a senior figure has just gone over and done that. And it just, like, the commentator on my stream said they might start booking, uh, they might have booked one of them. Um, and, like, you don't, that isn't what Bournemouth's about. Bournemouth are a really community spirit and it's really disappointing. And I hope Jason Tindall has, takes Junior aside and says, mate, you can't be doing that. I don't care who you are. You're not the big I am. You're not the captain. You don't do that to any player, but you don't do it to a youngster. He's just progression in his career. Go on, Greg. To be fair, I do understand, actually, and Tom, Sam, I do you know, see your point, you know, if maybe that Stanislas was annoyed that he wasn't running into the corner because yeah, it was yeah. running the end of the game. Um, he shouldn't do that, but, you know, I've met I've met Junior on a number of occasions and he's a really lovely guy, you know, really down to earth. Um, I just don't know what got into him tonight. Maybe he was frustrated that we wasn't scoring more and making more opportunities, um, you know, which were clear cut. Um, you know, I think it was a well-worked, well-worked three points tonight um, against a very, very double team who I think will be safe through their sheer desire. Um, they're not the most talented team in the league. We know that. Yeah. But, you know, they have got the shoes either that other teams haven't got. Um, just another thing that I wanted to bring up on as well, um, Sam, you mentioned about Josh King. Yeah. Go on. We've got 16 days till January. So, sorry? We've got 16 days till January. That's, Is that what you... I mean, do you think he'll go in January? I think that's what he's pinning himself up for. That's why he's actually given 110% now. 
Yeah. Well, I know that sounds really harsh, but you know, against Sheffield Wednesday, he was terrible. You know, I've never seen him play like that before. For ourselves, it wouldn't surprise me if he's already got a, a move sorted. Personally, do you know what I mean? Like already. You know what clubs are like these days. It wouldn't surprise me if he's um, already got a move somewhere. But um, he's if, got I, something in his mind where he wants to go. And I know West Ham's been mentioned. And he's probably thinking now, shit, if I don't actually put a shift in, hmm. I'm not going to be able to go there in January. They'll turn their eye to someone else. And, yeah, maybe. You know, hmm. if, if, I was, if I was Jason... I wouldn't start him against Luton, no way, because the thing is, is Surridge, Solanke, those players are our future. They're the players that are going to get us back into the Premier League, which, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, we will do. Um, You know, we're top of the league. You know, Watford and Brentford drew today. Um, I don't know what's the best result for tomorrow. Maybe another draw um, between Norwich and Reading. And... You know, I think I think the way the team are playing, you know, and the way they play against Huddersfield, we're going to have these games. Um, you know, I think we've got a fantastic chance. I think we've got a really good chance. We've put, put ourselves right in the picture. As long as we don't lose the main ones like Brooks, um, I'd let King go. I would let King go. But I think that's all he was doing tonight was trying to put himself in the shop window. Yeah, fair enough. Morgan, I'll give you the final word tonight. Yeah, can I just close off with saying, firstly, this show's turning into, like, I don't know, like a celebrity show. You know, you've got Tom talking to the gaffer. You've got Craig interviewing millions of people on Twitter. You've got I've Gary got Neville. I've interviewing you, Morgan. <laughs> yeah, wow, well, you know. And also, um, a memory, two years today, I was sat at um, Molyneux in the freezing cold with nine layers on, two hot chocolates later and how I didn't get hypothermia above me because it was bloody freezing that day and uh, to make it even worse that we lost 2-0 so you know oh, yeah, up the powerful. cherry yeah. Hey? Yeah, up the cherry I've got Donald Trump for Stoke cheers mate thank you Love it. And cheers, Morgan. Thank you very much. I'm going to give my man of the match to Tom tonight. I don't know why, but he cheered loud and he seems tired. So Tom can have man of the match. Cheers, Morgan. Man of the match to Tom Jordan. And, uh, you know, could you just give me a, a, a cheeky um, heads up as to play rating show is obviously going to be imminent on the channel. Um, mm. Who's who's going to be scoring best for you? I think you've got to say, obviously, Asmir and goal. Junior's the match winner, but I thought both Cooks, again, brilliant. Jack Simpson, brilliant. The one that I was... You know what I'm like, Sam, and people have always say it about... You know, I rarely get on players' backs individually, but watching it live tonight, Lloyd Kelly was doing my head in. I, 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 don't, I really rate the guy. I don't know. He looks so casual. I don't know what you thought watching on the telly. I mean, he just... Obviously, there was that little thing with, with Junior. And just on that a little bit, I just... It's a difficult one, isn't it? It's not nice when that's what you're talking about. But there was something not right with Junior. He had that little pop at, at Lloyd. He looked a bit... He was having a few pops of players. And then that at the end, it was almost like something was going on. So, d- I don't know. I hope there's nothing, you know what I mean, behind the scenes. But um, what I will say is, yeah, in that sense, Lloyd, he was getting no help from Lloyd. And then Lloyd, he, he was getting the ball and he's just so casual with it. Do you not... Did you see that on the telly? Did you think Lloyd looked a bit... Almost like pedestrians, like walking around really slowly and taking the, sl- the throws really slowly. And I was thinking... Come on, Lloyd. The amount of times he had so much space in front of him. Um, I don't know. It's, 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 there we go. Someone said that. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? When you've been watching um, games on the telly, I've always thought Lloyd's been pretty consistent. But um, last couple of games, that first half on, on the weekend and tonight, I just thought he doesn't look, he doesn't look good, in my opinion. Um, but... Yeah, difficult. I thought I thought he did all right, and I don't, you know what? I'd have to watch back, and I usually sort of um, try to watch back on ACB TV because mm. you can have you know you can sort of watch it back for a certain amount of time before they take it off um, ahead of the next game. And I didn't really notice that. I, you know, I know there were individual moments that I thought were very good in front of the North Stand. He sort of um, this was must have been in the first half. He sort of like headed it up in the air, and then just as the Wickham player looked like he was going to get on it, he. He managed to control it. He just make some good last ditch tackles yeah, and headers. Don't get me wrong. Was, it was more when he had the ball. You know that looked very sort of uh, you know Nathan Ake esque. But 
Yeah, you could be right. I mean, you know, David has said on air, agree. Um, he slows the build-up play down. That's what I would have said on the whole. It was, like you say, you're always going to get a good block, good headers. You know, he's, he's still solid, don't get me wrong. It's more, it's probably, like I say, with all these players, we've hyped him up and I, I, I really rate him. So, and it's, it's weird, isn't it, when you watch games on the telly and then you go to a few live games and you almost think, I wonder if I would have noticed that if I was watching that on the telly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was he was the only one that I thought was really poor. Billing weren't great. Even, you know what I'm like, I didn't think Jeff was bang on it. Um, yeah. I thought he was better second half, but I thought some misplaced passes and stuff. But even like Brooksy, and he, he's, he's a classy player, but probably that, especially in that opening period where I remember that Dom Solanke header that Allsop made a good save from. It felt like within the first 10 minutes, I don't know what it was. If that goes in, the game is completely different, isn't it? Do you know what yeah. I mean? And the the more chances that were going astray and you felt like, oh, we're scoring a minute, I kept thinking, yeah, but the longer this goes on and they've got something to hold on to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just just delighted we got over the line, mate. But um, I did notice at the end as well, when Junior, Junior went to walk off the pitch, um, because he was clearly not happy when the whistle went. And Lewis Cook had just been substituted, come straight on, grabbed him, said, come on, and brought him over to get in with the group. So yeah. big up Lewis Cook for that, because that shows shows a lot of, you know what I mean, experience and get get the group together. And Steve Cook was involved in that as well, just keeping all the group together. And at the end of the day, it he shouldn't have done it. He went over, he, you know, went past a certain line, in my opinion. But we're quick to moan when people don't look like they want to be there. And what I, will say, what I will say is, when I've played football, I'm sure it's been the same with you, Sam. If I've ever had a go at people, my own my own teammates, if I've ever had a go at them, kicked off, had a bit of a to-do with someone, it's because I want to win and it's because I care. So let's look at that and let's spin it on that a little bit because we don't like it when people don't care, do we? So we'll it's funny. It there, I, we? I remember playing a, a Vets football team. So I play for Ferndown Locomotive, eat a, a Vets team. and How can you play our... Vets, Sam? <laughs> yeah, I know. How can I? <laughs> We, um, I'm saying played, it before uh, the comments say it. Yeah, we played a friendly and um, against Bournemouth Electric and we lost 4-0. It was the first time we've all played together for like 10 years. We were a Sunday league team for like, ages, worked our way up to the Bournemouth Prem. And, you know, we were all fairly good players, but we've all got older and stuff. And, I, you know, I was... I was getting really frustrated with a few of our players and probably with myself. And I, I kind of lost it. I was like, come on, lads, we need to be more diligent. You've got to be careful on the ball. And everyone, <laughs> like at full time, was like taking the piss out of me, like saying, you use the word diligent to like... Oh, you get banded to hell game. afterwards. And uh, you know uh, what? I, I, he was probably frustrated with a number of aspects of the performance. So if he is maybe mouthing off at a particular player, yeah, maybe it's not good. And maybe that stuff should be you know, kept behind closed doors. But... I'd rather see passion than not. And it's it's clearly for the good of the team, isn't it? Yeah, and let's be honest, Junior's not a, a hothead who is, is known to do this. Do you know what I mean? He's he's overstepped the mark with a younger player. Do you know what I mean? He's he's probably, yeah, it's just the heat at the moment. But I think JT's just, I'm sure they'll be absolutely fine. It won't be, I think people overreact a little bit. I think if you play football, you know that happens all the time. Um, yeah, overstepped the mark. He's supposed to be an experienced player, but like I say, frustrated, shows he cares. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it's too, too big a deal. Um, just hoping. I did think a lot of time in the first half, he almost felt like he had to do everything is on his own. He was beating a few players because he won. I felt sorry for him because I think if you probably said the two weakest players tonight, I would say it was Lloyd Kelly and Philip Billin, and yeah. they were the, the two that were supposed to be supporting Junior off that left. Yeah. So I felt like he was probably felt like he was doing a lot of the work. So, but yeah, is what it is. He got and let's let's not forget he's the match winner. Yeah. He's the match winner. He he's did. He did. Winner. You know, if Lloyd Kelly had had a go at someone, I'd have gone, hello, mate. You haven't done nothing today. But Junior did do have a decent performance before that. So it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. We're top of the league. Come on. Good man, Tom. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, mate. Cheers, mate. See you later. And if you want to watch that Stanislas goal, rewind to the very start of this video and I'll show you that goal. And also, do me another favour. There's a thumbs up button here on YouTube if you're watching. Press it because that helps as well. Just press the thumbs up. It's free content that we're giving you. So if you could just do that, that would be really appreciated because it all helps. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. It was 1-0 to Bournemouth. It wasn't the performance that the 2,000 spectators wanted it to be. The chair boys haven't really been humbled by big margins in the championship. And it was the same tonight. It was clear that Bournemouth, we did have too much for them, but... <sighs> We were laborious as we were industrious, and much like Wickham really as well. Anyway, Junior Stanislas was the difference, scoring in front of the North Stand. And Cherries, a top of the league. Will we be there tomorrow? 
fingers crossed. See you soon.